Okay, let's see if you really understand. Let me give you an example. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do here, and you can see why I mentioned to you, they'll call it perpendicular distance because that is indeed what you are calculating, right? If you have the same deal here, you've got a vector, you've got two points, right? Can you use this idea here to work out how far one is from the other? The application of that is, cool, I now have resolved my vectors in two different directions, perpendicular to each other. But this is how the question will often be phrased to you. Can you work out the perpendicular distance? And it's then a stepping stone to something else. So let me give you a moment. My advice to you is to draw a diagram. Um, I'll even give you a secondary piece of advice, which is even though we're in 3D vectors, remember back to the last term, you're drawing it on a piece of paper. Sometimes three-dimensionality in your diagram is actually a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a hindrance rather than a help. That's exactly the word I was looking for. So draw a diagram. What you want to seek to make clear is what's the relationships between all the different things so you can draw onto it, right? I wouldn't worry too much about a 3D coordinate system. It's just where you can place things so you can see them, okay? Let me give you a moment. Draw your diagram. See if you can work out how you can use the projection. You're going to need to remember how you do that with dot products and so on, and there's a few different ways to do it. And then we'll come back together and I'll show you my solution. Okay, off you go. And the first thing I want to point out, if you can have like one eye on your working, one eye up, or potentially if you're like, I know how bad I am at multitasking, just pay attention, okay? The first issue you immediately encounter is, this question provides you three coordinates, three sets of coordinates, A, B, and P, but we know to work out this perpendicular distance, to resolve this onto this particular direction here, uh, perpendicular to AB, we're going to need to do this kind of stuff in here, right? A projection of one vector onto another. One vector onto another. And I have given you precisely no vectors, right? So I've got to go from these coordinates first to know, well, what's being projected onto what? You can tell me its name, right? Two vectors, one projected onto the other. Anyone want to start me? What's being projected onto? It's AP, right? AP. That's going to get projected onto AB, AB, which I've drawn over here. Okay, so for starters, if you want to project one thing onto another, well, helps to know what those two vectors are. And the question doesn't state it. You have to go ahead and work that out. But this is not too difficult. To get from A to P, I've got to change the X, I've got to change the Y, I've got to change the Z. So what do you get as your vector AP? Yeah, I'm going to go from negative 1 to 2, so that's a 3. I'm going to go from 0 to 1, which is 1. And then I'm going to go from 2 to 0, which is negative 2. So there's our AP vector. What about AB? Yeah, I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1, that, from 0 to 1, which is that, and then from 2 to 3, which is that. So far, so good? Cool. So I've got this vector projected onto that vector. So I now begin for my own working to say I'm projecting a P onto a B. By the way, just as a minor note, um, if you have a look at some of the worked examples that you can find in the textbook or online, they will often do this thing where they name these vectors something separate, like U with a little squiggly, or V, or P, or Q, or A, or etc. There's no problem with doing that. It does make this notation just a teeny bit more succinct. I'm trying to avoid extra perineals flowing around, especially when one's A and then there's another A and you just get confused. So I'm just leaving it as this because I think you know which one's which. Is that okay? Now, we last lesson looked at the fact that there's a bunch of different ways to work out what a projection is, um, several different formulas. I don't know which one you went with, um, but the one in my head, because it just makes me laugh, is the one that has your base vector, count it, one, two, three, four times, if I recall. Do you remember that one? Uh, it looks like this. You're going to have uh, this one that comes up first. It's going to be 3, 1, negative 2, right? And then, then come all of the base vectors. <laughs> Four times, are you ready? It's going to go 2, sorry, 2, 1, 1 there. We're going to do 2, 1, 1 dot product against itself. And then, one last time, we multiply that entire scalar by this dot product, uh, sorry, this vector. Does that make sense? The base vector. Is that okay? You can use the version which has the hats in it, that's totally fine with me. Uh, that one with the cosine in it, probably not so useful because I have no idea what that angle is, so I'm just going to leave it to one side. Okay? What did you get? 
when you did the dot product? You did like 6, 1, negative 2 on the numerator, 4, 1, and 1 on the denominator. What did you actually get when you simplified? Fantastic. And then this, of course, is our vector, right? So far, so good. So I have so far discovered that my diagram is terrible because that doesn't look like 5, 6 of my 2, 1, 1 vector, but that's okay. All it's doing, it's not, I don't care about its proportions. I want to know how they're related to each other, okay? All right, so far, so good. That's a good start. I've got this. How do I use that again to get to this? Um, what, what, what should I call it, by the way? What's the name of it? I could give it a lot of different names, right? I'm trying to go for a succinct one using the language that I've got here. For starters, I'm after a distance. So I'm just going to say absolute value, magnitude of. What's this thing called? It's PQ. Is that okay? Now, there's a bunch of different ways that I could do it. The most obvious way that it looks like to me is to get this, I could go say from P to A. So I'd do the opposite of this vector. And then I'd go from A to Q, because I just worked out what that was. Is that okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write that. I reckon I can fit it just here. PQ, before I strip the direction out of it, is going to be negative AP. And then I'm going to add AQ. Is that alright? Since we're only concerned of the distance, why don't we Pythagoras? Oh, you want to just work out, well, okay, I can just do uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared here. Yeah. That's totally fine with me if that were all we were interested in. I'm going to give you a more versatile method here, which uh, yeah. in those times when you are not just interested, remember, remember where I'm really going, right? So if I did just work out distance, cool, then I have to then work out direction, right? Uh, I can do it all in one hit and very easily get the distance out of it, okay? Um, but good pickup. Um, I know what negative AP is. It's this, but everything's backwards. Is that okay? So I guess I'd get negative 3, negative 1, positive 2. Is that okay? And then I've already just determined what this is in the previous part of my working. Plus 5, 6 of, it's 2, 1, 1, isn't it? 2, 1, 1. Is that all right? That's going to be PQ. Okay? Now, at this point here, it just becomes a bit of arithmetic. I'm going to give you the answer in a second, but the arithmetic is actually not the bit that I'm worried about. Once you've put these two together to take the absolute value, to take the distance of all of this, you are going to have to do some Pythagoras, just like Jean mentioned before. I think from memory, you're going to get an answer like this. Oh, let's see how good my memory is, or how bad my memory is. Did I get it? Hooray! I can do some things. All right, so my stunning mental arithmetic. No, I just worked it out before. Um, I'll show you my full working there if you're interested, if, if this, computing these vectors together and then working out your distance was problematic for you, I'll show you the full working. But the important thing to me is you understand the geometry of this. And you'll encounter it in the further questions of exercise 5D that I've assigned on the calendar. Okay.